Hi and welcome back. Have you ever wondered what's the difference between a top student in school compared to an average one? In this video we will show you some facts about the science of learning. Emotions influence our ability to learn. Our ability to learn is affected by a number of things, one of them being how we feel. Research has shown that our emotions affect everything from how we perceive information, how we pay attention, how we remember information and how we solve a problem. Feeling stress, anxious, fearful or ashamed are the worst emotional states of learning. The limbic system is activated by these emotions. When the limbic system is activated, it interferes with how memory is generated. This is why it is very important to create a safe and stress-free online learning environment. If your learners are relaxed, it will help them learn and retain information better. Social interaction is good for learning. Some learners may prefer to quietly learn by themselves, whereas others may learn much better when the learning is done through social interaction. Having learners collaborate with each other usually leads to much better learning outcomes. Brain imaging studies have shown when information is presented by other people in multi-sensory way, neural images show a number of neural networks functioning together simultaneously. Research has also reflected that we learn information effectively through social cues such as recalling the words of others and emulating their actions. More information doesn't always mean more learning. When processing information, the brain has to work to understand. Because of this, you should not present large amounts of information to your learners and expect there to be an increase in learning. The point at which a person's brain becomes overwhelmed by new information is referred to as cognitive overload by brain scientists. When there is too much new information at all at once, it results in cognitive overload and will ultimately reduce learning. There are two ways of learning in this case. The quantitative method, which provide less in new information, allow your learners to understand most of what they are currently learning before presenting them with new information. And we have the qualitative method, which switch up your presentation method so that it is less overwhelming. Making mistakes are an essential part of learning. When learning something new, no one usually aims for failure. Generally, it's something we want to avoid, without a doubt. You would want all your learners to successfully complete their online courses or training content. However, the science of learning shows us that making mistakes is actually an essential part of learning. For example, the first time we get on a bike, we don't all learn to ride it right away. We get better by practicing, making mistakes is essential to learning process, in the, it also applies to academic learning. If individuals are being pre pressured to succeed, it may inhibit learning. The research has shown that some students learn and perform better when they are told failure is normal and expected part of learning. This may be because feeling less pressure leads to better performance. Additionally. When errors are emphasized, learners will usually focus more on those errors rather than what they should be learning. Learning happens best through teaching others. Teaching others something you have learned is one of the most effective study methods. In fact, there is a highly effective study technique designed on this principle called the Fenman Technique. This technique proposes when learning a new skill or studying for an exam, learners write about their topics as if they were teaching someone else, even a child. The concept of figuring out how to explain something complex, briefly using non-jargon languages helps consolidate the learning that is already there and it will help identify any knowledge gaps.